very good welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Even as we get into the depths of the word of God, all of us know that we are living at a time of a lot of fear and anxiety. And one of the greatest victory that we have is that for us who know the Lord in accordance to his own purpose, we know the power that is in the word of God. And the word of God is one of the greatest antidote and to fear. And you know what? Today, as we get into understanding the power of the word of God, you will realize a great wealth that comes from the word of God that cannot be negotiated for or cannot be traded for anything else. Let's bow down our heads for prayer even as we uh, begin our session today. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you. We worship you, Jehovah Father. We give you praise because you are God. As we get into this moment of understanding the power of the word, we pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit that God, you will open our eyes to an understanding. You will open our eyes to an understanding of the word of God and the depths that are hidden in this word. God, I pray that through the power of this word, you're going to break uh, the yoke of the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ. And Holy Spirit, we ask of you today that you will help us to understand this depth in the name of Jesus Christ. As we understand the power of the word of God, um, the power of God's word. Life is hard, particularly to them that do not understand scripture. And certain moments can be uh, breaking if you do not grow in the word of God. If you do not grow in the word of God. And the last time, if you can be able to remember, we say that very clearly that the word of God has the power. The word of God has the power to be able to create from John chapter number one, verse number one. The Bible is very clear. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God himself. And the word became flesh and dwelt in our midst, we beheld its own glory, like the only glory of the begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And then we discover from Genesis chapter number one, again, the Bible begins with the words, in the beginning, the world was vain. It was in a destruction. It was full of darkness. And you know what? I love verse number three. The Bible says very clearly uh, that the Holy Spirit Spirit hovered upon the waters. The Holy Spirit hovered upon the waters. And you know what? Uh, we agreed yet last time that when you are in a destroyed situation or when you are in a challenging moment, you need to understand that the Holy Spirit is actually hovering upon the waters. The Holy Spirit is actually hovering upon the waters or hovering upon your dark situation and with one agenda. And God's agenda is to make sure that he is able to bring order in your chaotic moment. We are living at a time of uncertain moments. We are living in challenging moments. And you know what? You can purpose to trust in the word of God to create a new beginning, to create a new life, to create a new possibility, to create a new adventure, even at this particular moment of uncertain we have sung a song that is saying, light of the world, you step down into darkness. Again, he's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ himself coming into this dark world. And you know, the singer keeps on saying, my prayer is that open my heart and let me see the beauty that made this heart adore you. And my prayer is that, that as we go through this challenging moment and you know, moments of uncertainty, moment of sickness, moment of loss of hope, that you will allow Jesus Christ, who is the light of this world, to be able to step down into the darkest moment of your situation. Because whenever he steps, he steps in, then there is a total, there is a total total creation. This light of the world, the darkness or the grave could not keep the light of the world in the grave for more than three days because the word of God has such an amazing power and it has such a dynamis that is able to bring newness, you know, into every situation that we go through. The other thing that we discovered is that this word of God is able to bring in a transformation that no one can ever bring in our lives. I'm reminded of uh, the man of God, David, in the Bible. David is a man of God who found himself, you know, in a very destroying situation. He kills Uriah. 
he takes the wife Bathsheba to be the wife, you know. And you know what? The killing, the lying, the engagement into all that evil brings David at a place of darkness. It brings David at a place of destruction. But you know what? David discovered something powerful about God, that our God is abounding in mercy. Our God's grace and mercy are new every morning. His loving kindness will never cease. And because he understood that, he refused to be defined by his sins. He refused to be defined by his circumstances. And you know what? This man made a radical choice. And his choice was to go to God who is able to create even a new heart for him. I like what he's saying in Psalm 51. He's saying, brought out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. David understood that God was able to wash him even in his destroyed situation. And then you know what he's saying? Cleanse me from my sin. Behold, you desire truth in my inward parts and in the hidden part, you will make me know wisdom. In other words, what we are saying, in the presence of God, for them that understand the word of God and use it very properly, the word of God is able to bring in a transformation, is able to bring in a new hope, is able to bring in a joy like no other, is able to bring in a refreshment that mends you from your broken pieces. The word of God is full of wisdom. I don't know where you are. I could be speaking to you in, you know, in prison. You don't have to languish in swing. We have a God who is merciful. We have a God whose grace, you know, is sufficient for all of us. We have a God who is able to transform us. You know what? David discovered, I am in the nick of being transformed or being totally destroyed. The difference of our sin and our gross darkness is how you respond to the word of God. Remember, Judas had an opportunity to tap from this grace, to tap from this mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. But you know what? He missed an opportunity. There was one thief that, you know, was crucified together with the Lord Jesus Christ, but he captured and seized the moment of his transformation. Do not allow this situation. Do not allow your sinful situation or oh, your brokenness to put you down. You can arise and hook up with a God who is a creator to bring in more, more life and more, you know, hope into your situation. You can arise and enjoy the light that comes from the word of God. The other thing we discovered is that this word of God is able to reveal the word of God revealed uh, to Moses things that happened in Genesis. And here the man of God pens it down in the beginning, you know, uh, the, the world was void and null. Talk, you know, he was able to see the Holy Spirit hovering. He was able to see God separating the firmaments from the firmament. He was able to see God allowing the dry ground to come from the waters. He was able to see the stars of the sky coming into formation and the marine animal coming into formation. Can you imagine yet not born but with the eyes of the Holy Spirit the Spirit of God reveals to Moses things that happened even when he was not there. The word of God is able to reveal. It is the word of God that reveals to Isaiah about the coming Messiah in Isaiah chapter number 53. And he see him stricken, you know, without form, without, you know, a beauty, carrying our iniquities and our transgression. He sees him as a tender shoot that is coming from the ground. You know what? With the eyes of the spirit, Isaiah was able to take his eyes to the horizon and so things that God was able or was to do. Daniel is another case who sees the things that would happen in the end times. You know, from the Old Testament, he transcends with the Spirit of God and he's able to see things that are going to happen in the end times. What are we saying? The word of God is able to reveal. And if the word of God can be able to reveal, it is still able to reveal things that are happening in scripture. This word is able to reveal God to us. Are you looking for God? Are you hungry and thirst for godliness? Are you hungry and thirst for the depths of the word of God? Look no further. Go to your Bible. Ask the Holy Spirit to teach you. Connect you with people that have walked with the Lord, that are 
understand the word of God and are able to divide it rightly, allow them to help you and allow them to walk with you in this journey of faith. What are we saying? Because the word of God is able to reveal to us all those things, you can imagine that this word again can be able to reveal the evils of our hearts. It can be able to reveal the beauty or the things that are lying within us. It can also be able to reveal the power of the evil spirits that could be working against us and not only reveal but this word is able uh, to make even the word of God work in those particular situations. Then today I want us to get deeper again even as we read and look into this and one of the things that I want us to continue is on the power. Then we are saying that the word of God builds you up in, in uncertain times. The word of God is able to build us up even in uncertain moments. This word can be able to build you up in a certain moment. The Bible says in Acts chapter number 20, verse number, Acts chapter number 20, verse number 29, for I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Also, from among yourself, men will rise up, speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after themselves. Therefore, therefore, let me see, therefore, watch and remember that for three years I did not cease uh, to warn you every night and day with tears. So now, brethren, a content to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance. What are we saying? This word of God is able to build us and is able to give us an inheritance among the sanctified or among us who are being sanctified. Let me tell you, the word of God has power. When Paul was coming to a point whereby he was leaving the children of Israel, one of the, no, not the children of Israel, when he was leaving uh, the disciples, I'm used to the Old Testament, when he's leaving the disciples, he's telling them, I want you to see that after my departure, after I go, perverse men will rise up, perverse men will rise up, and they will be speaking uh, evil things, trying to draw away the disciples after themselves. Therefore, watch and remember that for three years, I did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears. So now, brethren, I commend you to go. God and the word of his grace. I want us to understand that we come to times in life where we get totally destroyed, totally destroyed in one way or the other. I don't know about you, but I found myself in moments of darkness. I found myself in moments of brokenness. I found myself in moments of loss, loss of valuable things, loss of relatives that I value, loss of relationships that I value. But you know, going through betrayal in life. Pastors, you know, we go through a lot of betrayal in life. We go through a lot of disloyalty. We go through a lot of stabbing back and not pastors only. We go through a lot of stabbing back in the place of our work, in the place of our engagement in different relationships. We go through moments of brokenness. But you know what, dear loved ones, the word of God is able to build us up even in the moment of brokenness. You may have have lost a relationship. You may have lost a wife. You may have lost a husband. You know, we are living at a very challenging moment, particularly during this time. To stay together, all of us in the house, a lot of discovery taking place. And, you know, some of us are not able to contain ourselves into the things that are happening. Marriages are getting broken. Lives are getting broken. I want to commend to you, to the power of the word of God and his grace. And this word is able to build you up and even give you an inheritance. It is able to build you 
and give you an inheritance. You may have lost a job at this particular time of the pandemic. You may have lost your good health. Some of us have been confirmed with the COVID-19 and you had some pre-existing conditions and you're there in hospital full of a lot of fear and anxiety, not knowing whether you are going to make it at this particular time. I'm here to encourage you that it is well with the righteous. God, by the power of his word, and the word that is full of his grace is able to build you up and give you an inheritance. I am speaking to a single mom somewhere. Maybe you thought you are a second wife to somebody, but the pandemic has proven otherwise because yule jama amerudi kwa mke wake yule wa kwanza. Na huko pale unangangana, unajuliza. When will I acquire, you know, some confirmed identity? The word of God is able to build you up. The word of God is able to raise you up. The word of God is able to make and mend the broken pieces. The word of God is able to give you hope even in the midst of this calamity because we serve a God that is full of grace and his grace is able to build us up. It reminds me when I lost my mom. It reminds me when I lost my mom. You know, the challenging moments, you know, and the hard time of brokenness, feeling like all is over. But the word of God was able to build me up. The grace of God was so available in my walk of life that even in moments I would feel lonely and like I have no hope. The word of God came in handy and it came and built me up. I commend you to the grace of God wherever you are and to his grace that is able to build us through his word even to give us an inheritance even among the saints. Then to Today we want to ask ourselves, how do we use this word? How do we use this word to be able to help us in our times of challenging moment? Tutalitumia hili neno na mnagani. Mtu moja na nikumbusha mama, tulisema kiswahili usikisahau tuko katika mwambao wapuane. Na kweli kabisa sita kisahau kiswahili. Kwa sababu ninajua ya kwamba kuna watu ambayo wanategemea tuonge luga ya kiswahili. So I'll make sure uh, that I'm able to speak the Swahili uh, language, then how do we, how do we do it? What do we do with this word? Number one, we study it. Let's study the word of God. For 2 Timothy 2.15, the Bible says, be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Nataka ukumbuke, when God created Adam, he gave them a land to till. He was given the land where he had come from. His body, mwili wake ulikuwa metengenezwa na yale matope. Alafu wakati mungo memumba, akampatia the same source, the same ground where he had come from to be able to till. It. He was to work out, you know, that same ground, that same uh, land. You know what I, I, I am leading to? This is the land where we came from. Our body, wakati mtu anakufa, anarudi mchangani. Adam wakapewa, ule mchanga aweze kuifanyia kazi. God has called us to work on our carnal man. God has called us to work on our flesh. God has given us six days when we need to fix the soul man and subject everything under. Now, Paul is saying we need to be you know, diligent to present ourselves approved of God, having done what? Worked on this body, worked on our anger, worked on our evil, worked on our malice, worked on our carnal nature in a manner that we will not be ashamed at the day of the Lord Jesus Christ when we are presented before him. And you know what? If we are going to work on this kind of man, then we must rightly divide the word of truth. Now, what is this that we are talking about? If we are going to study the word of God, we must study it diligently, carefully, cautiously, paying attention to study with persistence. That is to study with a focus of achieving a particular goal. Many a times we study the Bible and many people are preaching from the same scripture. But let me tell you, when you study the word of God diligently, you are studying it with an agenda to realize a particular goal. How do I study the word of God? Somebody asked me this question last time. How do you study the word of God? I want to know how to study the word of God. I 
I have an objective goal and every week I have an agenda. If I want to grow in patience, I will study with an agenda looking for scriptures that are talking to me about patience so that after it all, I can work out on this flesh man diligently so that I can be able to present myself blameless. And how do I do that? By making sure that the scriptures that are putting me on the spot to make a transformation and a change in my life, I will diligently look at them. I will cry to God and ask God, help me. I am willing. I desire to be transformed. I want to study this word in a manner that it brings change in my life. If you don't study the word of God diligently, then you are studying the word in a lazy manner, in negligent, in a slothful way, and in a careless manner. Choosing scriptures that work best for you. Avoiding scriptures that want to fix down the kind of man in your life. If you're struggling, you're struggling with immorality, the way to study the word of God diligently is to go to the Bible and deal with all the scriptures that talks about immorality. Let the word of God teach you how to subject immorality down. Let the word of God teach you how to walk in freedom. Let the word of God teach you how to honor God with your body. And this word, the grace of God in the word of God is able to help you. Then how do you, if that is the way to study it, how do we look at the word of God? If you're going to get a transformation in our life, we need to look the word of God like the breath of God. These are the words that God penned down so that the Bible can be a manual for us to use in this wilderness life. So we need to pay attention to the word of God with the diligence that this is the breath of God. You know what? Before somebody is dying, you know, when somebody dies, we always ask a question maneno yake ya mwisho yalikuwa yapi alisema nini na yale maneno ya mwisho ni maneno ya maana sana hata mtu akasema ya kwamba wakati wa mwisho azikwe kama ameangalia kichwa upande fulani watu itawasumbua kwa sababu wanataka kuheshimu maneno ya yule mzee maneno yake ya mwisho wengi wetu tumefungwa na maneno ya mwisho ya mwisho yaliyosemwa na mababu zetu jamani ye je hili neno la bwana linahitaji kutufunga namna gani the words that god spoke to us and left to us as a manual to lead us in this wilderness journey is the breath of god so when you study the word of god know that it is the breath of god 2 Timothy 3.16, the Bible says, All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be found adequate, equipped in every good work. I've heard people saying, Zina neema ya kufanya hii kazi, sijui nini, sijaitua, my story tu nyingi. As a ministry trainer, nimepitia mambo mengi, lakini kitu nimetambua, si neno ambalo lina uhaba, mandi koya kwamba a uh, uh, neno la bwana linaweza kukutia vihami vya kumfanyia mungu kazi yote ambayo ni njema so it is you to receive the word of god as the breath of god as what god means for our own life because this one is able to equip you is able to correct us it's able to rebuke us study it as the breath of god study it as the prophecy of God. The word of God is prophecy. It is penned down through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Second Peter 1.19, mandiko ya sema ya kwamba, and, and so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which would do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in our hearts, knowing this fast that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men like that moved, you know, spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. They had different uh, 
uh, fields of expertise. Some were doctors. Some were farmers. Some were fishermen. But you know what? This, regardless, your background zao tafauti. Roho mtakatifu aliwanenea kitu sawa. In other words, nasema nini? Mandiko ndiyo unabi ule wa ukweli. Wewe ambaye unapenda unabi, ningetaka urudi katika neno la Bwana ukapate unabi kwa sababu neno la Bwana is the uh, prophecy that has been inspired different men. And you know what this writer is saying? This writer is saying that then we are doing well to make sure that we have hidden this light in our hearts until the day dawns, you know, and the morning star, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, rises up in this dark moment. If you read the Bible in matters to do with creation, the Bible begins with the, with the darkness and then ends with the day. Inaanza na usiku na alafu na rudi na mchana. Kwa sababu gani? Tuko katika nyakati ambapo ulimwengu huwa sasa uko katika utawala wa shetani ambaye ni mtawala wa giza. Lakini mwandishi wa Petero anasema mwandishi wa hiki kitabu anasema let's put the light of the word of God in our hearts. Let this light continue shining in this dark world until the true light who is the Lord Jesus Christ shines. And when he shines the darkness of this world will take off the devil will not be able to rule again in darkness we are in a dark world we need to hide the word of god in our lives ficha neno la bwana katika moyo wako kama ndoa yako inakaagiza kama maisha ya malezi ya watoto wako inakaagiza kama hii pandemic imekuja na imefanya maisha yako ikae kana kwamba ni giza jameni kuna mwangaza unaotokana na neno la bwana la unabii chukua hili neno hide it in your word let in, in your in your heart let it be a light that keeps on shining on the darkness of your situation and let me tell you you will walk with hope and excitement in this evil world in this world whereby ukifungua runinga the negative news are hitting headlines all over but when you have the light of the word of god that is being hidden within you my friend you will enjoy every moment actually what we think is a crisis for them that understand the word of god and have hidden the word of god in their hearts they truly know that this is not a crisis they truly know that this is not an adversity they know that behind the curtains the author and the finisher of our faith is working out for something that is better and good than what we can be able to see is a matter of time and season the light of the world will step in this darkness of coronavirus he will step into this darkness of your dark marriage he will step into that darkness of the loss of your child and he will bring hope the question is do you study the word of god as prophecy do you study the word of god as the light of god then we are saying, study this word again. So mahili neno kama hekima, kama hekima ya mungu. Wakorintho uh, wakwanza, wakorintho wakwanza mlango wa pili uberi wa sita. Unasema ya kwamba, there is that, this wisdom, you know, and it's a godly wisdom. It's not the wisdom of this age. And it's the wisdom of the death of Jesus Christ. Where the Bible is saying, if the rulers of this age would have understood what they were doing, they would not have crucified the son of the living God. Why? The wisdom of different from the wisdom of God. So, as you read the word of God, soma kama ni hekima, ni ushauri wake bwana, ushauri ambao umetoka kwa mungu, haujatoka katika vitabu, haujatoka katika mambo ya ulimwengu, haujatoka katika staff series za wanadamu, unalisoma kama neno la mungu. Najua tunaishi katika nyakati neno la mtumishi wa Bwana limeaminiwa kuliko neno lake Bwana. Nataka kukutia changamoto. Hata kama utamsikiza mtumishi wa wote wa Bwana 
pima lile neno na neno lake Mungu kwa sababu there is the godly wisdom and the earthly wisdom may we be delivered from worshiping the creation instead of worshiping the creator we are living in evil days when people don't want to endure the sound doctrine but they want to accumulate teachers for themselves in accordance to their own desires and they would want to turn their ears from the truth and turn to meet Oh my goodness, Paul is talking to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter number 4 from verse number 2 and verse number 4. And he is warning him, do not give heed to fables. Don't give heed to myths. Don't give heed to the genealogies of men. Why? The word of God, the word of God is the true word. As we bring this to a close, we want to close with a word of prayer. At this particular time, use this time to study the word of God and study it with an intention. Kuna mabitu, umengangana nao miaka mingi, umemutoroka mungu, miaka mingi, saizi ya mekuweka on the spot, hakuna kwa kuhepa. Na hakuna mtu anakuita altar call kanishani. Ni wewe usome neno, ujiite altar call, ujiweke worship hapo, uabudu mungu, utubu. Waulize mungu wakupatie msahada ni wakati wakupigania imani yetu kila mtu akiwa peke yake. Usikose hiyo nafasi. Ninapo tumia nafasi yangu ya kujisot na mungu poa usipitwe na usipoteze COVID-19. Wacha hii COVID-19 kisha useme ya kwamba kama kuna matabia niliwacha ilienda na covid Kama kuna mali likutana la mungu, likutana na ye wakati wa COVID. Bow down your heads even as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you. And we bless you, Jehovah Father, for your love and for your mercy and for the grace that you keep on, dear Lord, according unto us in the journey of faith. Lord, we thank you because you are a good God. Your word is a light unto us. You have given us your word to lead us and to guide us. We pray. That as we study your word, you will speak to us like a friend speak to another. I pray for all my viewers, Holy Spirit, open the scriptures to them. Make the word of God alive in their lives. I pray that this word will speak to their situations in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you will heal the sick by the power of your word. Encourage them that are discouraged with the power of your word. Lift them that your father that are lowly with the power of your word. God, we thank you, even as we look forward for great moments together again. I bless them, dear God, and pray that you will see them through every challenging situation in Jesus' name. If you are there and you are not born again, bow down your heads. Let's pray together. Father, I receive the gift of salvation. Help me to overcome sin. Help me to understand your word. Help me to live a transformed life. In the name of Jesus, I believe that you died and rose again so that I can be able to enjoy this wonderful gift. It is in Jesus' name that we all pray and believe. May the Lord richly bless you. Thank you for tuning in. Connect with me on my online platform. Monica Mlinge is my Facebook page. Uh, my YouTube channel is uh, Pastor Monica Mlinge. Uh, like, subscribe, and share. Let's share and share and let's help are the people of God. May the Lord richly bless you. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Great job. May God bless you. Good job.